after finishing my one year internship in Chicago, we moved to New Orleans, where I was at the US Public Health Service Hospital. This is a picture of Gatehouse Apartments where we stayed. This was our neighbor, Carmela Behrens, and her two kids, Richie and Eddie. This is our apartment in my boat outside of the apartment. And Stephen is in the middle of these two boys. We did have a very nice swimming pool in New Orleans, and uh, we quickly realized that there were very few people who used the pool during the summertime because of the heat and humidity. Stephen quickly found a new friend, Richie Behrens, and uh, who lived across the parking lot, and he and Richie spent a lot of time in the pool and otherwise for the next two years. This is Eddie, Eddie Behrens, Richie's older brother. And that's Howie Behrens, the father. And Richie and Stephen are in the pool together at this time. This pool was one of several pools in the gatehouse complex. Gatehouse apartment was located in Metairie, Louisiana at the intersection of Interstate 10 and Causeway Boulevard. There were lots of young kids to play with at that time. We had a small grassed-in patio behind the house and there was common grass between the apartments uh, for the kids to play in. My parents came down to visit with us uh, while they were attending a, a temple affair which took place in New Orleans.
Our apartment was about a half hour away from the center of New Orleans. This is the President, which was a tour boat that went from downtown New Orleans to Natchez, Mississippi, then back. This is a view of the Mississippi River Bridge, New Orleans on the right and Algiers on the left. I used to moonlight at Algiers General Hospital at that time to make extra money. This is Jackson Square in the French Quarter in New Orleans. There were a lot of painters and uh, uh, shopkeepers along the gates of Jackson Square. This is the famous St. Louis Cathedral. And this is the statue of Andrew Jackson in the center of Jackson Square. These are the historic Pontalba Apartments, the first apartments in the United States. It forms two sides of Jackson Square. We're heading toward the French Market. There were shops inside the French market here where you could buy various uh, foods and uh, vegetables, flowers. Here's Sheila buying some melons. You can note the price. Four melons for one dollar. Again, some of the narrow streets uh, in the French Quarter. Many of the buildings had wrought iron railings. Brennan's was a famous place that uh, they were known for their breakfasts. And Antoine's was a, also a high-priced, famous restaurant that we went to once and found it okay. Canal Street's the main business street in uh, downtown New Orleans. And the French Quarter is off to one side. There's the famous uh, St. Charles Street uh, trolley. And it's a wide boulevard, Canal Boulevard. We're approaching Lee Circle. That's a statue of Robert E. Lee. Visitors to New Orleans will no longer see that statue as it was removed in 2020 because it was a symbol of segregation and racism. State 10, 10 the main road in and out of New Orleans. This is along Lake Pontchartrain, one of our favorite places to eat. It was called Brunnings. You could get a dozen crabs there for probably around ten dollars.
New Orleans is known for its Mardi Gras. It's a active tourist uh, area. These are doubloons. This is a view of the French Quarter with St. Louis Cathedral. It's, in my opinion, not a great time to visit New Orleans because of the crowds, the drunk people. in difficulty in walking through the streets because of the heavy foot traffic. There are floats that drive through the area and the people on the floats throw off trinkets, trinkets known as doubloons. And the tourists take those home as a souvenir. The balconies are packed over most of the hotels. And people try to get up high to get a good view of the area. It's just a mass of humanity. Organizations known as CREWS, K-R-E-W-E-S, put together floats and parade through town throwing doubloons and other trinkets to the waiting crowd. Stephen celebrated his third birthday in New Orleans with a lot of friends and neighbors. And that's Sheila and Carmela and Boydy Pethel. And the birthday boy and Sheila. This is one of New Orleans' favorite cakes, called a dough bash cake. That's Carmela. And those were the days where we didn't have to worry about the spread of COVID.
So the party now moves to the outside area. Here's Sheila standing outside of our gatehouse apartment. Here's Steven playing with his Hot Wheels. He enjoyed that toy very much and uh, had a lot of fun with it. This was a super slide that was set up at Lakeside Mall not too far from us, and Stevens walking up there by himself to get onto the slide. You can see him in the white shirt there. And the guy running the slide said, who in the world sent you up there by yourself? You better get somebody to help you. So I'm now at the top of the slide. Trying to get organized with Steven. And there we are. We're going to take that slide on together. And here we come. And we're going for a second time around. And a third time. They also had some rides set up on the mall's ground. I remember that was the mall that George Wallace came and had a big rally in his support for presidency. He was a radical segregationist from Alabama. Fortunately, he did not become a nominee for the presidency. In the winter of 1969, I was deployed to the Coast Guard Cutter Andriscoggin and spent 
six weeks in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. During that time, Sheila took Stephen to visit her friend from Chicago, who was then living in Minneapolis. This is Ellen Edelman and her daughter Lori in Minneapolis. Her husband Jimmy was a resident in neurology at that time at the University of Minnesota. Typical winter in Minneapolis. She'll also spend some time in Cleveland during my six week absence. That's Stephen and Lori, Ellen and Jimmy Edelman's daughter. That's Jimmy Edelman, Lori and Stephen. Swimming pool in the winter. After leaving freezing Minnesota, Sheila and Stephen flew to freezing Cleveland. That's my father-in-law, Fred Nathanson, washing his car in the middle of winter, which was very typical for him. He did have a hot and cold outlet in the back of the house so he could wash his car. Here we are back in New Orleans it's Thanksgiving, and my in-laws came in from Cleveland to spend Thanksgiving with us. Uh, we had the Barons over, that's Eddie on the right, and it was Richie on the left, and Stephen in the middle. And that's Sheila with Carmela Barons. Not sure where Howie was in this picture. and my mother-in-law, Ethel Nathanson, and there's the turkey in me cutting it. We decide to go to the nearest beach, and that was along the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Here we are in Biloxi, Mississippi, and we noticed we had the whole beach to ourselves, and we were quite surprised that nobody else was there until after we left we found out that nobody goes to the beaches along there because they're so polluted from the oils from ships but anyway we had a good time at the beach not knowing any better although Biloxi was about 90 miles away from New Orleans we decided to take a longer trip to Florida to the beaches here we are along Highway 90, along the Mississippi Gulf Coast.
It was about a five-hour drive into the Panhandle of Florida to Destin. At that time, there were very few hotels or motels along the beaches in Destin. Sheila and Stephen along the panhandle of Florida. We visited some people that we knew from Chicago. They're the Polterocks, who were, he was stationed at Eglin Air Force Base, and we visited them. This is Sheila with the Polterocks baby girl. And that's their son. And that's Sandy Polterock, and that was her husband before that. And their son. And we're driving along the Destin Beach here. There white sand, beautiful white sand with white dunes in a lot of places. The beaches in Destin were beautiful. They were white and uh, very clean. And here's Stephen and me. And Sheila with Stephen. We trailered our boat across the Ponch Lake Pontchartrain Causeway to the Chifuncta River. Here we are with our friends and neighbors, Stan and Ronnie Joseph, Stephen and Sheila, and their daughter. Stan was an orthopedic resident at the U.S. Public Health Service Hospital. Notice the Spanish moss hanging from the trees. The Chifuncta River was a very long river and sounded like an ideal place to go water skiing. Here we are boating along the river. There were some beautiful homes along the river. This is just outside of Mandeville, Louisiana.
This is my 14-foot boat that I had in New Orleans. Had a 40 horsepower engine. Not the most powerful to drag a skier, but seemed to work. And that is me up on a slalom ski there. Everything went well along the river until I spotted a large black snake in front of me while I was skiing. And that was the last trip that we took to the Chifuncta River. Arlen was born on March 13th, 1970, and here she is just uh, several weeks old. With Stephen. And here's Arlen at six weeks with Stephen. Here we are at Stephen's fourth birthday party. This is Ellen Edelman. She and her husband came to visit us in New Orleans. And that's Jimmy Edelman on the right. And that's Arlen.
And that's Richie Barons and Arlen. And more of Arlen and Stephen. Here's Sheila in Arlen in front of our gatehouse apartments along with Stephen. And here we are enjoying a crab feast. At that time you could buy crabs to take out for about $2.50 a dozen. Quite a bit cheaper then than it is now. In New Orleans they used to boil their crabs, unlike in Maryland where they're steamed and Old Bay is added. 